adventure, there will be something on prayer that you didn't know before. So that your life of praying, your attitude in prayer, your face in praying will be totally changed. Specifically, we're talking on praying unto the Father. Realize I'm not talking on praying to God. I'm talking on praying unto the Father. You say, but there is no difference. The God of heaven is the Father of those who are born again. Yes, I understand. But we're talking on praying unto the Father. Because until you have the attitude that God is your father, prayer is meaningless. It will be a servant talking to the master and there is no faith or assurance there. Unless you know that God is father indeed, it will be a hired laborer talking to the person who has employed him and there is no reward. Until you are praying to the God of heaven as Father, it will be like a stranger on earth, praying to a stranger in heaven, and there is no communication. Until you know that God is Father, it will be like a beggar on earth, talking to a far away beneficial person uh, in heaven, and then he doesn't have any hope of receiving. Even anything is just a beggar. The consciousness of God as Father removes the attitude of a servant, of a hired laborer, of a stranger, of a beggar from your praying. Matthew chapter 6 verse 9 After this manner therefore pray ye our Father which art in heaven You can't start your prayer like that and be refused in heaven If he is Father he is committed to you If he is Father he has promised you something If he is Father he must satisfy your need and your want In Matthew chapter 7 verse 11 If ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children how much more shall your father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him if he is father, he doesn't give his good gifts once in a year to his children. What do you think of a child rejoicing and it's only once in a year that he's able to get a gift from the father? If his father prayer is no more duty, prayer is something that you enjoy. What do you think of the child that speaks to the father in the home only once a week? And whenever he's to talk to the father in the house, he's so, you know, read long touch about it. He can't see it as duty. As a something that is very hard. No, that servant master relationship. If his father, prayer has pleasure. If his father, then prayer has joy. If his father, then prayer is expected 
repentant were looking forward to praying. If his master is difficult to pray. If we approach him as just an employer in heaven, giving us some of uh, you know the things we have worked for, prayer is difficult. If his father prayed, is just talking to him. And we enjoy it. We look forward to it. We receive from him because we do it. Yes, in John chapter 16, verse 23. And in that day, ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Praying will be asking the Father. It will be as easy as breathing. We will not need to learn how to pray. The child at home does not learn how to talk to his father after he is born. The father talks to him and he takes the cue from that and is able to to talk back to the father. And when he talks to the father, he looks straight into the eyes of the father. No sense of fear. No, no sense of unbelief. No sense of doubt. He belongs in because he belongs into that family. Therefore, praying is a family transaction from the child to the father. And in first in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14, this is what Paul the Apostle says. The way he prayed. And this is not a Jew. Talking to the God of Abraham. Talking to the God of Isaac. Talking to the God of Jacob. The Jews generally were not uh, using the name Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abraham but when Saul met Jesus Christ and his life was changed he began to realize this is not just the God of Abraham not just the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob this is my God and my Father I am his child he has sent his spirit unto me bearing witness in my heart I am a child of God and in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14 for this cause I bow my knees unto the father of our Lord Jesus Christ and therefore when he came there was freedom he was talking to the father do you pray with freedom? If you don't, maybe you are thinking of yourself as a beggar. And you say, oh God, if I can just eat the crumbs falling out of the table, I will be happy. If you will do me a favor and give me, I don't need a bucket of water, just a drop of water to cool my tongue in this austerity, I'll be so grateful. I am not asking that you will give me joy unspeakable. That will be too much. I'm just a servant. If you can just give me joy, just for a day, it will be all right for me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh God, I come before you an unworthy sinner. 
Oluwa mo to wa emi elese alaiye I am not worthy to be loved nko ye eleni ti not worthy to be saved nko ye eleni ti not worthy to be forgiven nko ye eleni ti abadari Just have mercy on me sasha anu fun mi sha what you will do for a stranger o ti wa se falejo do for me sasha fun mi what you will do for a beggar o ti wa se falagbe do for me sasha fun mi you are not praying to the father ki se baba lo ngba dura si you are praying to a god far away o ngba dura si olorun to jina rere ni mo se mo pa lu wi pe i bow my knees unto the father Therefore, there is freedom because I'm talking to the Father. There is joy because I'm talking to the Father. There is assurance, there is confidence because I'm talking to the Father. Now, Paul, don't you ever have a problem doubting God? No, not at all. Don't you ever doubt that the Father will disappoint you? No, not at all. Why not? The spirit of the, of adoption within me is crying, Abba, Father. And me, someone is so many no me who keep me pay Abba, Baba. And it is natural to believe my father. Oh, see, Jay, in Katu, see, Jay, Ram, me like to Baba. I am acquainted with him. If Moti me, Bashi, I take his word as fresh. No more, Lord, get be out. When I read his word, it's like my father just sitting by my side, talking to me, saying, My child, if you ask bread, I'll give you. If you ask this, I'll give you. If you ask for this, I'll give you. And immediately. He finishes talking. I talk back to him and I say, Father, you promise this, give me. You promise this, give me. I do that with natural faith in my father. Nigba ti mo ba nka oro re, nse lo da be ni pe baba mi, pe o joko se gbe odo mi to sin yin pe, bi o ba bere le mo fi fun, bi o ba bere ton ku mo fi fun, bi o ba bere le mo fi fun. Nigba ti mo ba to ba si ba me soro time mi pelu o a ba soro pe baba, o ti se le ri pe wa fun mi ni ele, wa fi wa fi fun mi, wa fi fun mi. Nitori nitori na, o kan jade ninu mi gege bi ehun ti o ti di ara fun mi lati ma bere lowo re, lati ma ba soro. I don't I don't see any child in Nigeria here. I've never seen. That every time this child wants to talk to the father, the first thing to do is to cry. I've told you that I'm going to say things we've never had before, perhaps. Some of you are parents. You think about your child. Every time he wants to ask for bread, for breakfast, for water, for whatever it is, the first thing to do is to cry. At the age of one, at the age of two, at the age of three, at the age of ten, at the age of thirty, that child has been a crying child for thirty years. Oh my neighbor, but to my baby, phone yet I've been you phone oh me to be full in Kakalo or me you my so can let it be baby. We are never to allow do come on do me your modu meta or more do mewa titi but if you do more bad no you shall lose an answer push out about baby in Kaka. Is that a son attitude? She you are money. No, it's a servant attitude. You are runi. It's an attitude of forcing God, saying God, I have to force God before you can answer my prayer. Oh yeah, you are me more alone in the pack, but more alone in the pack to down a dura. No, God is more willing to bless you than you are even willing to ask. God is designing you to come around and to ask him whatever you want. How did God deal with Abraham? He was not your bring him out. God deal with Abraham. He was not your bring him out. 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 And I have no child as yet. How are you going to bless me now? Oh, and God says, well, look up. What do you see? I see the stars. Can you count them? I cannot. Your sons will be like that. And they'll be going for a walk. Abraham, you know something? You know that Sodom and Gomorrah are going to destroy them. Wait, God. Lot is there. Lot is there. His wife is there. The two sons are there. Two daughters are there. Now, the suppose you see fifty righteous people there, will you destroy them? Your body, a daughter, and one of the neighbors who are one. My brother, my sister, that is praying. It's casual talking to the father because you are acquainted with him. Oh, yeah, be bad. Oh, no, no, sorry. Get be bad. So many people are bad. You know his plans, you know his words, you know his intention. You are talking to him about it. Oh, my, to the oh, my, rule. Oh, my, share. And God said, well, Abraham, because of 
what you have said, I will not destroy them. Suppose they are just fought. Well, I will spare them, Abraham. Suppose they are touching. All right, I will spare them. But God don't be angry at me. Suppose they are 25. I will spare them. Suppose they are 10. God said, I will spare them. And Abraham said, Well, bye bye. Allah. I think they ought to be 10. Abraham, that's praying. How did Moses pray? Now God called Moses. Moses, you know, these people, they're stiff necked I'm going to destroy them. They have committed a great sin. I will make you a great nation. God, let's talk about that thing you are telling me. Now, I'm just asking you a question. If you destroy these people, what will they feel immediately? Will they not feel you are not able to take them to Canaan? And God said, Moses, you are right. That's true. The Egyptians will be casting a, you know, a reproach upon my name. Well, if it's so, spare them. Then you know they're human beings. And you are God. You, you pardon iniquity. Moses, I have heard your word. I will not destroy them anymore. That is praying. Elijah once realized that, you know, the people of Israel, they had gone astray. And he went to God. He said, God, look at all these people. We preach, they will not hear. We will tell them your word, but they will not leave me. We are supposed to remove rain from them for a few years. These people will, will come back to you. God replied Elijah and said, well, let's do that. Oh. We should do that to them. It will bring them back to their, on their knees. Oh, Lord, what die? Elijah, look, no, Tony, you're a cold event. See, I think about that, the group for the, if you want by, by there, one for the, that's how the rain starts. That's the child praying to the father. Oh, my tongue, but that's the baby. Not a beggar crying before a stranger. You see, I like the tongue, keep bringing what you are, lady. And you know, the Bible makes it very clear that if you are born again, you are a child of God. You believe, you're a child of God. You believe, you're a child of God. You believe, you're a child of God. And prayer becomes as easy as breathing. As uh, giving us pleasure as eating. And it gives us, you know, what we like as if we're just talking to somebody who loves us. In John chapter 1 verse 12. But as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name. Sons of God. Sons of God. Sons of God. When you are a son, you can pray. When you are a son, you can talk to the Father. When you are a son, you are not worrying about whether you have faith or you don't have faith. You just talk to your father because your father will listen to his son. The faith is natural as breathing is natural. It's the son talking to the father. There is no barrier between them. There is no doubt and there is no fear. And you enjoy it when you are praying. In Romans chapter 8, verse 15, for we, for ye, have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry Abba Father Nitori eyin ko tun gba emi eru lati ma beru mo sugbon eyin ti gba emi so domo nipa eyi ti awa fin kepe Abba Baba Now the word cry there does not mean weeping it means whereby we shout whereby we say with confidence Abba Father Ki gbe ni ko tun mo si pe ki eniyan so kun sugbon ki eniyan ma so wi pe Abba Baba Verse 16 Ese kerin The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God Emi ti kara re ni o nba emi wa jeri pe omo Olorun ni awa nse And if children then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ Bi awa 
ba si je omo nje ajogun le ajogun le awa ajogun olorun he says there is an inheritance for us o wi so ogun kan wa kun wa you know that at the time of the children of israel ese mo pe ni apupa omo israel joshua told joshua was so to lead them into kena aso fun joshua pe ki o dari won lo so moses told him very clearly moses so fun baba you will divide the inheritance to them by law e wo yo pe ile na fun won ni gege bi ogun ni won listen to me very well that is me that all the tribes of israel gbugbu awon eya israel there were twelve of them meji la ni won apart from the levites who were dedicated to the service of the lord ya to se eya le fi ti aya soto fun oluwa they knew the inheritance was there won mo wi pe ogun ije ti won it had not been divided akweti pin but they knew that because they were israelites an inheritance must come to them ṣugbọn won mo wi pe nitori fun won je omo israel ogun kan ni lati kan you didn't need to get into special favor with joshua to give you inheritance the land is yours oko ni lati wo inu akan se ojurere pelu joshua ile na ti di ti yin and all the families of each tribe they must have a parcel of land given to them not if they cry not if they shout because they were israelites and inheritance must be given to them gbogbo eya ko kan ni israel lo ni lati ni ogun lo tin lo ni lati ni ile tire ati ogun tire nitori na ki se nitori nitori nkan mi na ki se nitori ko won ki gbe tabi nitori ko won paru won ti mo ni omo israel not if you fight in the army duro na ki se nitori pe jagun loju ogun it's only the rubenites and the gadites and all the tribe of manasseh who chose an inheritance which they shouldn't have chosen they were told now arm yourself and go over jordan with the other people after finishing the battle then you can take your inheritance on the other side of jordan awon eya rubeni awon eya gadi ati eya manasseh nikan won yan ile ni won ni bi ti ko ye fun won lati yan eyi ni ni hake jodo jordan ni suba so fun won pe ki won gbara de ogun lati ba awon israel yo ku lo lati lo gba ile na but you know all the people that were less than 20 years of age they never went to battle sugbon gbogbo awon to din ni omo ogun odun won ku lo soju ogun all the women they never went to battle gbogbo awon obinrin o lo soju ogun the people that were between but above 20 years of age they went to the battle all the other people here they were resting in the camp gbogbo awon to le ni ogun odun soke ni won lo soju ogun sugbon awon ogun odun sisa le won si mi ni ibo when joshua was to divide inheritance nigba ti joshua fe pe ogun na he didn't say all you are 20 years of age and less no inheritance because you did not go to fight ko so fun yin ko so fun pe gbogbo eyin ti e je omo ogun odun sisa inheritance was theirs because they were children of Israel. Oguna je ti won ni tori pe won je omo Israel. Now you are not going to do any fighting. Jesus fought it on the cross of Calvary. Jesus fought it on the cross of Calvary. Jesus jaguna lori agbele bi is the captain of our salvation. Oni balogun igbala wa. He is the captain of the army of the Lord. Oni balogun a omo Oluwa. The captain of the host of the almighty. Oni balogun ogun lu ogun lu. He fought that battle alone in the garden of Gethsemane. Oda jaguna ninu ogba Gethsemane. He fought it alone on the cross of Calvary. Oda jaguna lori agbele bi. When he finished all the battle he said it is finished nigba to pari ogun na o wi pe o pari we were not even born there ah o ti le ti di wa nigba na o ti da yi nigba na we finished the battle before we were born o ti pari ogun na ka to bi wa and now we are born this is in yawa do not only born of the flesh ni pe abi wa ni pa tara ni ba abi wa ni pa ti we are born again at the at to be we get into the inheritance as wa wo inu ogun ni na salvation is part of the inheritance ibalaji ara ni na sanctification part of the inheritance so healing is part of the inheritance sanji ara ni na and it says we are Yes of God Osi. we are joint heirs with Jesus Osi. Christ Osi. That's why we go to the father oh you did it ni baba where is my inheritance kin e ogun temida with joy with faith i ask him pelu ayo ati igbagbo ni o be lo re because it is mine ni tori pe temida he is not going to give mine to brother michael o ni fi o ni mu temi fun arakunrin michael and he is not going to give brother michael's inheritance to another person o si ni fi ogun ti arakunrin michael ifun elomi lo have an inheritance in heaven o ni ogun ni o for you to be Huge. For your prayers to be answered, for your enemies to be driven away, for the demons to be cast out, for you to be well, for you to be provided for, for you to be rich in the Lord, for your family to be together, for you to have children, for you to have your inheritance, and you walk right into the presence of God with boldness. You don't, uh, you know, bow your head and you know, I mean, in, inside. You don't come as a servant, as a beggar, as a stranger. You come as a child of God. And all the angels they look at you, they say the sun has come. You brush the angels aside. You go right into the presence of the Father. And you say, Oh Lord, 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 Lord,
Healing is mine. He will send it to me. This is mine. Joy is mine. I will get it. Rest of mind is mine. Peace in my soul is mine. I fear no coming get it. Where is my inheritance? We are joint heirs with Jesus Christ because He has provided everything for us because we are sons. In Galatians chapter three. Verse eight. I'm reading there from verse twenty-six. Verse twenty-six. Galatians chapter three. Verse twenty-six. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Galatians chapter three. Verse twenty-six. Galatians chapter three. Verse twenty-six. Galatians chapter three. Verse twenty-six. Galatians chapter three. Have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. That's not talking about water baptism. And it's not talking about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. It is talking about the fact that you are made part of the body of Christ by conversion. Also, Nepal, it's all you feel as all the Yara Christi, Nepal, you can look at verse 28. Who say, Kiji, the Lord God. And you must understand this. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Once you become a child of God, there is neither Jew nor Greek. That means the Jew that becomes a child of God, the Greek that becomes a child of God, they come on equal basis. There is no partiality. You don't come as a Jew, you come as a son. You don't come as a gentleman. You come as a son. There is neither bond nor free, no slave and master. You don't come as a slave. You come as a son. You don't come as an educated person. You come as a son. You don't come as an illiterate. You come as a son. There is neither male nor female. You don't come as a weaker vessel when you are talking to your father. Sick of the setting in the hole. You have a son, you have a daughter. Sick of the setting in the hole. You have a son, you have a son, you have a daughter. And when they want to talk to the father, they don't talk as a daughter or they don't talk as a male child. They talk as a child of the father. You don't come as a slave. 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 When we pray, the whole inheritance belongs to every one of us. You don't come as a slave. You don't come as a slave. Pray and God will answer as fast as a man can pray and God will answer. Women can receive as a as great a miracle as a man can receive once you are born again. Oh, Benny, Nick, no, but you're bad. You're too big. Only you're too big. 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 You're too
you're asking something from the Father, it is like Jesus, the very Son of God, asking that thing from the Father, it must be done. It's not only you just opening your mouth, it's not only you praying and talking to the Father, it is I in them, talking to the Father, and the Father must hear. I in them, and thou in me. That they may be made perfect in one. Listen to this. That you see that the world may know. What will the world know? One, two things. But one, that thou hast sent me. What is the second thing that the world will know? That thou hast loved them, even as thou hast loved me. Can you picture God loving you as He loved Jesus Christ? Can you picture God loving you as He loved Jesus Christ? the Father putting all the pleasure of heaven upon you like he put upon Jesus Christ. Think of something. A, a, a bridegroom loving the bride. Now they're planning to get married. Just about three days to the marriage. Now this lady saw that she needed just about a hundred naira. And this man had Happened to be the manager of, you know, a large coming that he established on his own. He controls uh, millions of naira. And this lady now going to get married to this man three days to come needs only one hundred naira. So how can you be married to this man? This man loves this lady. Because you are the same God that he loved you. Beyond description. The love is so much that this man will think of this lady in the day and in the night. And and this uh, man will be sending messages to this lady all the time. Now three days to that man. This lady needs a hundred naira. And what do you picture that lady? Coming to this man. In charge of a large company. Now you see how this man loves this lady. Loves this lady. And the lady of the company is having the money at his this disposal. Asking for hundred naira. Coming before this and crying and weeping oh if you can give me hundred naira and really crying bring an ankashif out wiping away the tears the man will think you have a mental problem the man will say what's wrong with you my dear the company is yours. All the money I have is yours. You need 100 naira, you are crying. Bring it back to yourself. You are that lady. God the Father in heaven wants to marry you to Jesus Christ the Son. And the Father loves the marriage so much. And the Father has loved you even as he loved Jesus Christ. And you need ordinary 100 naira. From God, the creator of heaven and earth. Your world, Lord, right, let down From here. God who says, and the earth belongs to him and the fullness thereof. And you come to call the loving heavenly father and you are crying for hundred naira. Oh, God will think you have a mental problem. Oh, don't you know who you are? Oh, Jesus said, let the world know that you have loved them, the believers, even as you have loved me. Yes, can I remind you of what happened when Jesus died? Now it's in Mark chapter 15 verse 38. The children of Israel had a tabernacle. And there were three sections to it. There was the outer court where there was a brazen altar. That's where the majority of the Jewish people can come and make their sacrifice. Then you have the holy place where you have the, the table of the showbread. But you have the third compartment which is the holy of holies. That holy of holies only the high priest can go into that place once a year. The high priest. Now the only person that can get there once a year. 
they will go with blood. He will sprinkle the blood in that place. He will put bells on the on the hem of his garment. So that when he goes into the holy of holies, if he makes any mistake, he will die. When the people outside do not hear the sound of the bell, they know the man has died. They pull him by a rope outside. To go into the presence of God, it was great fear. That our priest will be getting prepared. I am going to the presence of God. The Jews will be praying outside to preserve his life. Because he's going to make atonement for the children of Israel. Pray at that time. Going to the presence of God at that time. It was great fear. Because you remember those two sons of, of um, Aaron in Leviticus chapter 10, they made a mistake, they died instantaneously. This is why there was the uh, veil between the holy place and the holy of holies where you have the presence of God. The moment Jesus died. Mark chapter 15 verse 38. And the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. We're told that that veil was four inches thick. As of what we for the thickness was four, four inches. And uh, the width is 15 feet, the um, length is also 15 feet. It was rent, it was rent from top to bottom. What does that mean? Jesus said, the curtain is removed. Not only the high priest now, if you go to the presence of God, no more death. It's now joy and love. Because through his flesh, the veil has been turned. Everybody that wants now can come right into the presence of God. When you come into the presence of God now, you are not afraid like the high priest going to the presence of God. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. That will be that may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. It will be a wasi be tell of a pen we boya, Kaleria, Nuba, Kias Europe, a Latin man, Latin man, Rani Lawania, who could you prayer becomes simple, Adura Waron, delightful, Oja to Muni, joyful, Oja to it's now a pleasure, Oja Oto, and the sons of God, Gagabia Molo, children of God, Gagabia Molo, let's go boldly to the presence of God. The moment you close your eyes, the moment you kneel down. The moment you stand up and you start to pray, you are already in the presence of God. You have gone beyond the angels. The angels do not have the freedom to talk like you can talk. Already you are in the conference table. There, there, is, there is the Father. There is the Son. And there is the Holy Ghost. And there you are as a son of God. You realize that, you know, when you are a manager, you the managers, uh, you know, the receptionist. Anybody that wants to come in, the receptionist will be asking you a question. What do you want to see him? For? Okay, feel the car. And then you have to feel all those things. And then they say, You wait here. I have to go and talk to the father. Sorry, to the manager. But this manager, you know, will, does he want you to come or does he not want you to come? Once he accepts you that you should come. You get before him. You put your hands at the bar. You are very, very careful because you are asking a favor from him. But now, while you are still talking, to the receptionist, I just want to see the manager. What do you want to see him? Another person comes in. And this receptionist. Uh, me says, so how are you? I mean, the, the servant, the messenger that they say I want to see a manager will say, 
how are you want to see manager? Okay. Now open the door. Maybe just knocks and opens. And Daddy, I mean, I mean, no, you don't have to ask angel or ask anybody. You just get into the presence of God. So you, to him is manager, to me, his father. So the man that is begging the receptionist, can I see him? He is asking for permission because he wants to see manager. I am not seeing the manager. He is manager, but he is my father. I am seeing him not as manager, but as father. My brother, my sister, that's how to pray. If you've never prayed like that before, you are going to pray like that this morning. You stand up. You go into the presence of God. You begin to talk to the Father. What do you need? Healing, salvation, whatever it is. That's part of your inheritance. You need God. The Bible says, My God shall supply my need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. What do you need this morning? If it's your father, talk to him as father. Talk to him about your life. About your marriage. About your family. About your children. About your wife. About your husband. About your work. About accommodation. About provision. If it's your father, you can talk to him as father. Father, if you are born again, let there be the joy of talking to the Father God in heaven. Go beyond the angels and go into the very presence of the Father. Jesus is there. The Father is there. The Holy Spirit is there. And you have all the liberty to talk to the Father about the need of your life. 